Duke's Jalen Johnson is a part of that group of prospects with really high potential but has struggled to consistently make their impact felt on the court, especially against tougher competition this year. This is one of the few episodes left in the first look series as we're getting close to developing the new full scouting reports. So be sure to comment down below a player you have to see before I end the series. Let's go ahead and get into it, starting with the likes of Jalen Johnson's game. Johnson's got an NBA ready body listed at 6'9", 220 with a 6'11 wingspan. He's a true locomotive in the open floor and has some really tremendous moments that we almost take for granted because there already are a few guys in the league at his size doing this. That dunk is the perfect example of the ridiculous things he's capable of athletically and he just turned 19. The size, speed, strength, physicality helps him in all areas of the game. Now that's never guaranteed anybody success, especially on the NBA level, but it certainly helps out a lot and he'll only improve in all facets under NBA strength and conditioning programs. Goldwire, good cut, and the slam by Johnson. It's probably going to be close down the stretch. Both teams play pretty well, but it's a great experience for Duke to find a way to close out a game, and that's the transition. To interject with a, another ACC score in a game going on right now as Johnson draws it. said, surely you can't be serious. <laughs> Jalen Johnson, nice. He did it in his first game against the best team the state team that... Johnson can hold his own in a variety of areas on the floor defensively. He's got solid instincts as a help side defender and is quite agile in space against guards and smaller wings. He's really a true four at this point and when you look at it from that perspective, his ability out there on the perimeter is a lot more impressive. He can both bang with bigs in the post and hold his own against guards on the perimeter and you don't ask for much more out of a guy like him. Now there are some things he'll need to patch up and we'll go over those more in depth later on in the year but for now. Defense has been a mostly positive and a high impact area for him when he's fully engaged. It shows they're not just one guy. Rocket Watts is taking over as the point guard and a Sam Hauser of Virginia. And today's Sam Hauser's birthday. Burn up top. You know, that's a foul. And there's no bad. Coburn's so big that. A lot of balls due to COVID, and since they've been back, part of it's been their opponents. Roach has the last seven for Duke. Desumo hangs, flips it inside. Coburn got it in his mouth, rotted to keep it alive, and right couldn't handle the pass. And put his back Johnson down, but Jalen. Jalen Johnson has a ton of potential as a playmaker. There aren't too many guys his size who routinely make plays like him. Now there's a lot of refining he has to do, but that raw ability, especially when he gets to the NBA level, is going to be a tremendous asset for him and his team. It might be the biggest appeal for him as a player. This was a big thing that was on full display in high school, and though it hasn't completely translated to Duke, I think as he works on his game, his handle, gets more experience, he can be someone who you trust to initiate offense at the four, maybe the five, or even the three, depending on how his game develops. A big part of his appeal is his ability to grab and go or start the break off the rebound. He's a good rebounder with good size, and this is an area where he can create a lot of advantages for his team, especially considering he's at his best as a passer and really as a player in transition. Broken play. All these teams now, North Carolina, Duke, you name it, they're so effective. Coleman gave a spark off the bench. He's out there. Johnson also playing in the front court right now as Baker. Johnson back to Moore for a good look. Away without having given up more. Matthew Hurd, who has not scored in this game. Boy, great defensive transition there by Jalen Johnson. He sets up Wendell Moore. Andy team, unfortunately, just not a lot of depth. DJ Stewart. Hurt. Spins. Back with DJ Stewart. This is Jalen Johnson. Wendell Moore. Nothing run. They run for just. He didn't block the shot. Another three off the mark, and Johnson comes down with rebound number 12. Now transitioning into some areas it looks like he'll need to work on. The first being shooting. When it comes to shooting, Jalen Johnson still has a ways to go before he's someone you can really trust from the outside, but he has shown flashes, especially in big moments, that he is capable of delivering in the future. He's got solid form from top to bottom, and has gone 8 for 18 from 3 so far this year. And that is encouraging, but the 63% from the line definitely suggests it might take a year or two in the league before he is a true threat from the outside. 
This is the biggest determining factor in the caliber of player he can be. If he can become a respectable shooter, his game is going to open up a ton. Half court offense is a struggle for him, but just adding a consistent outside jump shot completely transforms who he is and how he can fit into a team's structure on the NBA level. Jalen Johnson has to do a better job of taking care of the ball and making proper decisions in the half court. Whether it's getting out of control or forcing a pass into traffic, he needs to cut down in this area. He averages just over two and a half turnovers a game and about six and a half per 100 possessions. This is going to come with time and as the game slows down for him, but there are some head scratching decisions that he'll make throughout the course of games. This is why I can't quite call him a real positive passer yet. The potential is absolutely there, but it can be buried at times and even flip in the opposite direction. And when you have a player who is as big as he is and excels getting downhill, they're always going to be at risk for offensive fouls, especially when he's not particularly agile as the court shrinks. Johnson isn't the most skilled or nuanced player in the half court. He doesn't yet have the ability to create off the dribble, though he has had some really encouraging moments. Per synergy, he's only made one jumper off the dribble so far this year. He doesn't have that first step to blow past people even off that jab or rocker step that he loves to use. So learning how to use his body on spins, adding euros, jump stops are going to be key for him to get those baskets from the outside in in the future. Duke has rarely put him in the position to handle the ball in the pick and roll, somewhat due to his own inability to attack and put pressure on the defense as a driver. And he can fail to properly use screens and turn corners and tend to drift away from contact at the rim. He's got some ability on the perimeter, but it's not his strong suit by any means. He's been at his best coming off of dribble handoffs with set options for him and a clear path to attack downhill along with playing in the middle of zones as a roll man and even in the dunker spot. He's shown flashes in the post as well, but he has a tendency to travel and doesn't always make great decisions operating here either. Based on those high moments and what he showed in high school, I'd be willing to bet on him expanding his offensive game in the future, which is why I'm still pretty high on him despite the struggles. The main thing I'm watching for Jalen Johnson throughout the rest of the season is his consistency and health. Coach K recently said that his foot injury that he suffered in December was a lot more serious than we on the outside have thought, and he's been playing through it this whole time. Hopefully he can make it through the season without seriously hindering his body. If he comes out hitting five threes in multiple games, that might change everyone's mind about him, but until then, I think Johnson has pretty much shown us the arsenal and where the weak points are. There's no denying what he can do. That performance against Pitt alone might have earned him a spot in the lottery, but we'll see what happens. He's someone I think will benefit from the NBA game and playing alongside NBA level talent. I could honestly see him going anywhere from like the top 7 to the mid-teens depending on how the rest of the year plays out, especially in more of those marquee matchups. I appreciate you guys for watching this video. As always, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and comment down below what you think about Jalen Johnson's game. This has been another episode of First Look. I'm Keandre, this is Hoop Intellect, and I'm out. TFM, I put in that work. Man, yeah. I put in that work.